Okay, so hi everybody. Welcome to Principles of Marketing. Uh, my name is Matthew Harrison and I'm going to be your instructor for this semester. Uh, I'm excited to be here and excited to hopefully encourage you to learn something about marketing that will assist you in your future careers. Um, so even though this is a totally online class with no required in-class meetings, I always really strive to make the class feel like you're sitting in a real um, lecture hall. Okay, I, I don't like it whenever, I never enjoyed as a student when I took undergraduate courses or graduate courses where I felt like I never got to know the professor and I felt like they weren't very involved in the course. So I really strive to be highly involved in your course and to really be there for you and help you. So that being said, I'm available seven days per week for your convenience. Um, you'll see me online grading your papers every day and being active in the course, but um, in the meantime, I know that sometimes students have questions, and in an online class, that can be difficult sometimes, so I do give you my Tennessee Tech email, okay, um, and I do answer my emails within 24 hours or less. Uh, my email is mtharrison at tntech.edu. Feel free to shoot me an email anytime you have a question. Um, so that is there for you. Um, as we go down, this is the textbook you're going to need for the course. Okay, it's Gruel and Levy's sixth edition of marketing. Uh, I don't care if you want to purchase an ebook or a physical copy of the text, that's totally up to you. Um, students often ask, well, you know, do I have to buy in the bookstore? And I always say, no, no, you can you can rent it. I actually encourage students to purchase their book or excuse me, rent their book from chegg.com, C H E G G dot com. It is an awesome resource for you to use, and I think you can rent this book for like $25, so it's awesome. Um, now, that being said, I can't help you with the chocolate strawberry on the front making you hungry every time you read. Now, that may happen, but can't do anything about that. But um, this is the book that you need, and the ISBN number is here. You don't need an access code or anything like that, just the book. So if you have questions about that, let me know. Go ahead and get that ordered for me. Um, you'll see that your assignments for the course are kind of varied. Okay, you have quizzes. Um, these three types of assignments, the marketing application responses, the discussion boards, and the case studies are all exactly the same, um, formatting-wise at least. The, the topics are always different and the assignments are slightly different, but formatting wise, they're always the same. And then of course you do have a final exam. Um, so I'm gonna go through each of these with you and give you some details. Starting with quizzes, um, in an online class, it's difficult to hold students accountable. So as a department, we agreed that quizzes would probably be the best way to do that. And these are not difficult if you are reading the chapter and you are listening to the video lecture that I make for each week, uh, which by the way, you will have a different video lecture uh, that I've made for you. So it, again, it feels like you're sitting in a real in-person class, hopefully. Uh, but it, as long as you read the chapter and watch the videos, you really shouldn't have any trouble with those quizzes. But just to give you um, a little bit of a study guide or maybe aid you in your studying, um, I did create some quizlets for these. Um, if you go to our course homepage, under course materials, if you click on content, it should take you directly to, um, well, if you scroll down here, it'll take you directly to the week one screen. Uh, this is where you'll find that video lecture that I created. Um, and then here's the Quizlet. So when you click on the side, it takes you directly to a Quizlet with practice questions and uh, games and all kinds of fun stuff you can use to prepare for those quizzes each week. Okay, so those are there for you. Um, okay, so that should just about cover it with quizzes. Uh, I told you that the marketing application responses, the discussion boards, and the case studies are exactly the same. So I'm going to skip down just a little bit and tell you what I mean by that. Okay, um, all of these assignments do require that you use um, two key terms, and when I say key terms, I'm talking about the bolded terms in your textbook. They are listed at the very end of the chapter entitled key terms, so if you need to use those, you can. Uh, I mean, you're required to use at least two of them, but you're welcome to use more than two. Um, those are in there. Um, in addition to those key, two key terms each week, I want to see you using two external sources. One of those sources should be from a scholarly journal, like the Journal of Marketing or the Journal of Business Research. And the other source can be really from 
any side of your choosing, a lot of people like to use Forbes or the American Marketing Association. Okay, there's different options there, but at least one of your two sources needs to be scholarly. Okay, so to kind of ease your burden into remembering all of this, um, I've created what's called a template for submission. So if you go back up here to the content section, um, course materials and content again, under general course information, you're going to find the submission template here. And so I'm just going to click on this and open it for you so you can see what it's like. Um, so there's a spot for your name and the title for your assignment. So if your assignment is called Chapter 3 Discussion, you're just going to type your name and Chapter 3 Discussion and put the date. Okay. Um, there's a spot here for your two key terms. And then there's a spot here at the end under your references for each of your APA sources. I would like for you to cite your sources using APA formatting. Um, I also created here in the content section an example so you can actually see what a completed template looks like. And you'll see that here. Uh, again, I took the student's name out just for privacy purposes, but this was a place discussion board when we get to the place P of the four Ps. And um, her paper here talked about she, her two key terms were vendor managed inventory and the limited assortment supermarket. So she underlined them each time that she used them. She also used some extra key terms that weren't required, but she underlined those, which is fabulous. Okay. Um, and then at the end of the paper, she has her references. Bear in mind, these should be listed in alphabetical order, uh, but I'm not a huge stickler on that. Okay. As long as they're there, but um, the references there on the last page, anytime you any, basically what I'm saying is that every time you reference the external source in your paper, you need to make sure that you show me that you're using an external source, okay? Usually that's done by parenthetical citations, like what you see here, um, or here, or up here again, okay? So make sure you're including those parenthetical citations. If APA formatting is scary to you, you can go back over here under the general course information tab, and of course the syllabus is there too, but there's a whole section on APA formatting. Uh, the library's website is a great place to find these sources. Um, I've given you some links to the Journal of Marketing, the Journal of Business Research, uh, and their Purdue OWL is just a fabulous source if you need help with APA formatting. It is just wonderful anytime you have a question just a great place to go. So that's there. Um, and I do request that all of your assignments be submitted as a PDF. Okay. And I do that because um, I always, people always ask, well, man, why can't it just be a Word document? And I always like to give you a, a real reason why. Um, when there are like a hundred of you guys, and I do genuinely read every word of your submissions, everything you type, your discussion boards, your, your papers, your case studies, I read all of them. And you know, when I have to click download on each individual student's Word document, it, it takes a lot of time to download each of those files on my one little computer here. So it's very helpful if you've done the PDF because D2L actually pre-opens the file and I'm not required to download it to my computer to view it. So it just makes um, the grading experience a lot easier for me. So please um, submit your assignments as a PDF. And if you're not sure how to do that, I included some instructions here on how to save them as a PDF, okay? Um, now, if you're doing a discussion board, you'll just attach the um, PDF document to your discussion with a brief little summary. Um, and for the marketing application responses and the case study assignments, you'll actually be submitting those to the Dropbox folder as a PDF, so should be pretty easy. Now, please bear in mind that the discussion boards, when I say discussion, I'm, it's a little different than what you've experienced in most classes. Okay, this is not just your, hey, get on here the night it's due and write, you know, five sentences real fast and submit it and I'm done. Uh, this is actually like a formal paper that you're writing that uh, once you've written your paper with your two key terms and your two external sources, you're uploading that to the discussion board with some kind of quick little synopsis or just summary of what you've written about for your classmates. Okay, so it, it is kind of a lengthier, um, time-consuming assignment, so do make sure you put the correct amount of effort into those um, each week. Okay, so those are here. You do have a final exam for the class. This is uh, not an exam that I made. It's a departmental exam, so we all use the exact same uh, final exam. It is 30 multiple choice questions, and if you've been paying attention to the course, it's usually pretty easy for you to succeed, okay? Um, there's 
other language here you can read through yourself. Um, this is an online course. We've already talked about that. Um, people always ask, well, you know, how much time is this going to take? How much time should I devote to the class? So I finally added something to the syllabus, and um, I estimated between 8 and 10 hours. And a lot of people see that and freak out and go, oh, my gosh, 10 hours. Okay, so don't freak out, all right? Um, if you learn quickly, then 8 to 10 hours is – uh, probably an overestimate for you, okay? But if you're a slow learner, it may take you a little longer. So it just depends on the student. Um, if you can read the chapter quickly and then watch the, the video lecture and do the assignments and the quiz, you might finish in you know three to five hours or five to seven. It's different for every student, but I would say no more than 10 hours, okay? Um, you will see frequent announcements in iLearn, and I will show you that in just a moment as to how you can access those, okay? Um, back here under, if you go to the top here and click on this hyperlink, it takes you back to our main page. You can see everything here. Um, and everything that I'm telling you now is pretty much summarized here in written form, but I like to make the audio just because some people are auditory learners, but um, here's the thing telling you I'm here seven days a week for you, and there's the syllabus. Um, the template for submission, where to go to find scholarly sources. Oh, due dates, everything is due in here by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday nights, okay? So, like I said before, please don't log in on Sunday at 10 o'clock and try to get it all done in two hours. Um, you, you won't get a good grade and you won't actually learn anything either. So please make sure that you're giving yourself adequate time. Uh, the course each week opens on Monday morning and closes on Sunday night at midnight. So you have a whole week to work on stuff. I usually send out, uh, I post an announcement here and I also send an email. That way you guys, I make sure you get it. Um, but it just tells you everything you have to do for the week. And uh, for example, for this week, it tells you everything that's due. It's all right here. I give you a summary of the chapter and I give you some motivational quotes because I know that the first week can always be stressful to everybody and we all need motivation in life. So there's some motivational quotes for you. I love those. You'll see those every week. <laughs> um, so those are there. Um, okay, back to the syllabus real quick. At the last page, you do see a course calendar. And if you're like me and you like to work ahead or, you know, I know maybe you have vacation planned, you're going somewhere for spring break, or maybe you are just going to be out of town for the weekend or whatever and you want to work ahead, that's cool. I give you all the due dates here in the right-hand column so you can work ahead. You can mark your calendar with all this so you're ready to go. It's, it's there for you, okay? Um, for this first week... I did not give you any assignments that actually require the textbooks. I know a lot of you guys are waiting on financial aid or you know, you're waiting on Amazon or Chegg or whoever to ship your book to you or whatever. So um, just want to give you some extra time to get that book ordered. Okay, so your real only assignments for this first week, you need to read the syllabus. You need to familiarize yourself with the class, play around in iLearn, order the textbook. Um, if you have your book, go ahead and read chapter one. If not, you can read it next week along with chapter five. Uh, there is a short video called the Four P's Crash Course that I want you to watch. This whole class is all about the four P's. So it's very important you understand that. So I gave you a crash course video to watch very quickly. And you do have two assignments. One is a syllabus quiz and the other is an intro discussion board. Um, I know all this sounds super overwhelming. It looks like a lot, it's really not, okay? So as we go back to our homepage, all of these assignments are summarized here under the week one announcements. This is everything you have to do in Word format. Um, but I know if you're like me, you might like to have a checklist or something to help you out. So if you go back up here to course materials and content, and again, find week one, scroll down week one, it gives you everything you have to do here. So here's that video lecture I was telling you about where I go through all the high points of chapter one, all the need to know stuff. You can follow along with an actual voice recording if you like that. That's there. The Quizlet's there too. And then the two assignments that are due this week, I actually title them under Assignments Due This Week. You have the Syllabus Quiz and the Intro Discussion Board. And then on down for your videos, there's that four-piece crash course. Um, as we take a look at this Intro Discussion Board, if you just click on it, it takes you straight there. Um, this is nothing crazy. It's kind of the equivalent of a icebreaker activity in a real in-person class. I just want you to tell me your name or what you go by. Um, so if your name is William, but you go by George, please tell me your name is George. So that way I don't call you William all semester. Okay. Um, tell me your hometown. I know that a lot of people who attend tech are local, but we also have people from like Australia and 
Timbuktu. So tell me where you're from. I always like to hear that. Um, give me your student classification. Are you a sophomore, junior, senior? If you work, where do you work? And tell me something fun or interesting about yourself. A fun fact. Maybe you're double jointed. Maybe your favorite restaurant is Olive Garden. I don't know. Tell me something interesting about yourself, okay? And finally, don't forget this part. People always leave this out. Um, at the end, I want you to scroll back through our syllabus at, uh, in this middle column here looking at the names of all the chapters. So this first week, we're doing an overview of marketing. Then we're going to go to marketing ethics, consumer behavior, B2B marketing. Um, and tell me which chapter you're most excited to begin studying and why, okay? So you can turn all that in. This introductory discussion board is the only assignment that does not require the submission template, okay, meaning that you don't need any scholarly sources, you don't need any key terms for this assignment. Now, for all your other assignments, you will need those two sources and you will need those two uh, key terms, but for this assignment, you don't. Okay, and again, all of this is summarized here for you under week one announcements, so you'll have that. If at any point you start to feel overwhelmed or you just have a question or you're not sure about something, my email's right down here, mtharrison at tntech.edu. Shoot me an email anytime. Okay, I'll be glad to answer your questions. I do ask you to use this email and not the iLearn email just because I can give you a quicker response through my phone that way. Okay, so if you have any questions, shoot me an email. I hope you guys have a great semester and a great week. And if there's anything I can do to help you, let me know. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.